Hello everyone! In this video I will show you how you can make interesting art in Microsoft Paint as well as how you can automate almost anything on your computer and significantly boost your productivity. Sounds interesting? Then let's get to it! Working in any program, oftentimes you have to press the same shortcuts again and again or perform repetitive combinations which sometimes can hinder your workflow and take a lot of time long term. But what if I say that each of these actions, including moving your mouse and typing a text, can be performed by just pressing a single key at a time? In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how using free software called AutoHotKey or AHK, you can assign any combination of keys or mouse moves to any key either on the second keyboard or on your main keyboard or mouse. You may want to apply this method to a second keyboard because if there are many things that can be automated, it's not always convenient to override your current keys or existing shortcuts. So this will allow you to separate the inputs from different devices, which is not possible in Windows by default. If you're already familiar with AHK, you might want to skip to the part where I specifically set up a second keyboard with AHI. Now let me quickly demonstrate what is possible with this program. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using something that everyone is familiar with, Microsoft Paint and Notepad. I will also show you a couple of tricks in a free version of a video editing software called DaVinci Resolve, but AHK can be virtually used with any program that you would like to automate. In Microsoft programs like Word, Excel and others, including Paint itself, you can reach almost any tool or function by pressing an ALT key and then entering a certain combination. In Paint, for example, you can enable a pencil tool by entering ALT, H, P, and 1. Of course, you can also just move your cursor to the pencil sign and click on it. But why do we have to do any of that? Let's make our computer do that for us. At the end of the day, isn't it what computers were designed for? Here I have the script that I wrote, with which it becomes possible to do the things we were talking about. With experience, you'll be able to write similar scripts like it's a piece of cake. But for now, let's just see what it can do. Let's say I feel like drawing with a pencil. On my second keyboard, I press the insert key for that, which by the way could be any key. Here I have a pencil enabled. Let's draw a circle. Now, why don't we fill the circle with some color? We press the home key for that one. Maybe the circle is alive and it has a name. Let's enable the text tool and call this blob Richard. Now, when it's alive and has a name, let's give it vision. For that, we enable the eraser tool by pressing delete and simply erase two little spots. Heck, let's give it a mouth too. Let's give it hands using the line shape tool. Perfect, maybe it will be easier for Richard to move around if it has legs. Let's give him a pair with the curve shape tool. Excellent, now what if it's not an actual Richard, but a picture of him? Let's draw a nice little frame with the rounded rectangle shape tool and let's choose the size of it to our liking. And here we have it, the art of a happy blob Richard. How beautiful is that? And you can do that too. And I'll explain how later in the video. But let me show you one more trick that I've discovered automating paint. Not that it's really demonstrative, it's just cool. With some basic math, I was able to write a script for drawing perfect circles. Here's how it happens. But the real magic begins when you move your mouse during the process. By doing that, you can get these interesting spiky circles, which you probably remember from the thumbnail of this video. Now, let me show you some real automation for DaVinci Resolve, the software that I mentioned earlier. In the timeline, you can see the video you're watching being edited. If you remember this part of the video, here I have four different keys that appear on the screen, one by one. When initially imported, the size of a single key takes up the whole frame, so I shrank them down with this zoom setting to 22% of their initial size. I also spread them along the screen with this position setting. Let's break down the whole process, step by step. First, you select a clip in a timeline, then move the cursor to the field next to the needed setting. Then you press and hold the left mouse button, and then you move your mouse left or right. Then you release the mouse button, and probably move your cursor somewhere else. Not to mention you have to physically run with your eyes across the screen when you move your cursor and when you look at the result in a different area of the screen. That's quite a lot of actions for such a simple task if you think. Then I thought, wouldn't it be cool to just be able to move a selected clip 
with something like arrow keys on a second keyboard? Well, that's exactly what I did. With the help of auto hot interception and another useful add-on called tap hold manager, now I can simply select a clip and move it naturally with the arrow keys on my second keyboard without ever bothering to move my mouse. AHK does everything for me. Applying same principles, now using page up and page down keys, I can easily resize a selected clip. I don't know about you, but I was impressed when I first saw this in action. One last thing that I really want to show you is this quite simple automation, but it just goes to show how much time you can really save using AHK. Right now I'm creating the subtitles for this video. Almost for every sentence I have to create a distinct clip and as you can see there are quite a lot of them. Now what would it look like without a script? First I need to select a needed line of text. Then I press Ctrl C. Then go to DaVinci and click right button on the timeline. In a little menu I select add subtitle. Then I go over to this text field where I double click and press Ctrl V and then finally move my cursor back to adjust the length of the clip. With the HK all I have to do is to select the needed line of the script and press a single key. And like a charm it creates this subtitle clip that I just need to adjust. This is actually crazy if I would have to go and do all those repetitive actions for every single small clip. I hope that with all the examples I managed to show you that the software can be extremely useful even for the smallest tasks and that it has huge potential in general. But now the question is, what do we need to set it all up? So for automation purposes we're going to be using a free software called AHK which stands for Auto Hot Key. This program allows you to run your own scripts to automate many different actions on your PC. This software is extremely diverse and in my opinion greatly underrated but however diverse it is, we will need only a small portion of it. To use AHK, you don't need to have multiple devices connected. AHK works great for some simple automation, which we will learn about just in a second. However, if you want to send the input from several devices separately, which is the main focus of this video, you will need to set up AHI or AutoHot Interception. Simply put, AHI is based on a driver that allows you to intercept any input coming into your computer and it is the thing that will allow us to differentiate our keyboards. Now let's get down to business. Go to autohotkey.com and download the current version of the software. Run the installation file and select the express installation. After AHK is installed you are now able to create AHK files by clicking right button either on your desktop or inside the file explorer. Select new and then select AHK script, which will create a file with AHK extension. Alternatively, you can create and write a text file in a default Windows notepad, and then manually change the TXT extension to AHK. Now the fun begins, let's create a simple script to familiarize ourselves with the software. First, create a file called script.ahk. Now we need to open it. Again, you can do that with Notepad, but I advise you to download the script editor specifically designed for AHK, which will make the process easier. But as I said, it is not necessary. To download the editor, go to autohotkey.com scintilla text editor for AHK and click installer to download the installer file. Then go through a simple installation process and leave all check marks by default. When it's done, now you should be able to click on your script with the right button and see an option, edit script. Press on it and it will open the editor. If you wonder how to customize the color scheme, download the properties and user settings files from the description of the video. Go to C, Users, Your Username, Documents, AutoHotKey, Scintilla Text Editor, and replace Scintilla Text Editor Users.properties and then go to Styles and insert Style 1 into this folder. Then open your script, go to Tools, Scintilla Text Editor for AutoHotKey Settings. And in the style menu select style 1 and press update. While doing that, I also advise you to uncheck the auto backup feature for the program to not create backup files all the time, but this is up to you. Now let's try to learn the basics. If you have your script open, you should see a default header, which we're not gonna change. Now let's write a very simple script below. Why don't we make computer type something for us? Let's choose a key we're gonna assign our text to. Let it be 1. To assign something to a key, you need to type the name of the key and then type colon twice. The list of the keys and a lot of other useful information can be found by clicking on an active AHK script on your taskbar 
which will appear after we run our first script by right-clicking and pressing Help. Then expand Usage and Syntax in the content bar on the right and select List of Keys. Here you can find all the keys you might need in your script. Numbers and letters are used as they are. Note again that for the icon to appear you need to run a non-empty script. So let's fix that part. We wrote one and double colon. Now on a new string we're going to use a command send. It is the main function you need to know in order to create any shortcuts. Mainly it is used to send input from keys and their values. Let's type send and then the following text. This is an AHK script. So what it will do is when you press one it will type this exact string of text for you. But don't forget to type return in the end of a shortcut for the script to move on to other shortcuts, otherwise the script might get stuck. Now when the script is ready, click file, save or simply press ctrl s. Now you can close the script, double click on your script in order to run it. Now you can see the icon has appeared on your taskbar. From here you can right click on it and open help page, exit the script, reload the script or open windows spy which we'll come to later. Now let's open notepad and try to press 1. Wonderful, now we have our script working. Now let's have some more fun. Let's open the script by right clicking on the AHK icon and pressing edit the script. Now we're gonna learn how to send key combinations such as selecting all text. Let's type 2 and double colon. Now let's type send, comma and now we need to use braces. Braces are used to send keys as though they were actually pressed unlike sending the copy of the text we typed previously. Type this, Ctrl down inside of the braces, A inside of the braces, and Ctrl up also inside of the braces. So what it does, it will press down the Ctrl key, then while the Ctrl key is being pressed, it will press and release A, and then it will release the Ctrl key. So we have a well-known Ctrl A combination. And don't forget to type return. Let's go ahead and save our script. Now the script is still running, so in order for changes to be applied, you need to reload the script. Now once it's reloaded, you can go ahead and try to select our previously typed string of text in notepad by pressing 2. And now we have it. The last thing, let's create this shortcut. Ctrl and 3, double colon, send, Ctrl down, A, Ctrl up, send, Ctrl down, C, Ctrl up for copying the text, send, right, to set the cursor at the end of the string, send enter to enter a new line of text, send control down v control up to paste a copied text, and return. Now save the script and reload it. And if we open the notepad and press the newly created shortcut control plus three, it basically duplicates whatever text is written. You can do that as many times as you want, and as a fun math fact, the number of strings will grow according to an exponential function with a base equal to the initial number of strings. Essentially, these are the basics you need to know to have some understanding of how this script writing program works and how to run your own simple scripts in AHK. Going from AHK to AHI, all these principles transfer directly without any changes. If you want to learn more, I encourage you to go and read the help manual. There you can find some other examples and tutorials about how AHK functions. Search tab can be extremely useful at times too. For now, let's move on. So we want to set up a second keyboard so that when we press the button on it, a certain combination will be performed. And we don't want to take up the keys on our main keyboard. First thing I'm going to ask you to do is to create a folder on your desktop called AHK. This is done to simplify and organize the whole process. Next, we need to install the interception driver. The detailed description of the installation process can be found on a GitHub page from where we're going to download the AHI. You can find the link in the description below. To download the driver itself though, you need to go to a different GitHub page, the link to which will also be in the description. When downloaded, extract the zip archive. After that, copy this folder to our AHK desktop folder. Inside, locate the command line installer folder and open it. Here you can see the installation file called installinterception.exe. But to install the driver, you can just double click on it. You need to open the command line as an administrator. For this, in the Windows search on the taskbar, type cmd and press run as administrator. From here, you need to navigate inside the command line to the installinterception.exe file. To do that, type cd, which stands for change directory and then press space. 
Now go to the file explorer and copy the path to the installer as it is shown. Paste it to CMD and press enter. Now we can run our installer. Copy and paste the full name of it and then type forward slash install and press enter. The installation should be complete after you reboot your PC. Now go to HI GitHub page and from there download the HI archive of a 0.5.2 version and this is important as there is a crucial file missing in the 0.5.3 version. Extract it and copy the folder to our AHK desktop folder. Now what we need to do is to copy two folders from desktop, AHK, interception, library folder and paste them into desktop, AHK, autohot interception, library folder. You might need to run the unlocker PS1 file, but let's check if it's needed first. In a desktop, AHK, autohot interception folder, find monitor.ahk file and simply double click on it. If everything is correct, a large window should pop up. You can close it for now. If the window did not appear, try running the unlocker PS1 file as administrator. For more information, you can read the installation guide on the GitHub page. Now, to make our life easier, let's copy the content of library folder to C, users, your username, documents, autohot key, library, so that we can run our scripts from any place outside of this autohot interception folder. Also, you need to be aware of your script's header. The include section should have autohot interception in angle brackets. When we're done with this, open the AHK folder and go to the autohot interception folder. There, open the monitor.ahk file again. In the opened window, you can see the list of devices connected to our computer. I should say that each device has its own unique ID number, so when copied once, you don't need to check and change it every time you run your script. This is very useful. So, to see which ID is assigned to a particular device, you need to consecutively activate each of these devices one by one. Let's start with the first, ID1. Inside of the windows, there are unique IDs that are assigned to any device, and these IDs change every time you plug and unplug different devices, but the unique device's ID remains the same. Let's activate device number 1. Now, I've got two keyboards connected to my laptop. One of them is an inbuilt keyboard. When I try to press any key on this keyboard, we can see that this is the keyboard number 1, as the keys that I pressed showed up in the window below. Now, we need to figure out what's the ID of the second keyboard that is connected to my computer. So we check the first keyboard and check the second one. If I try press keys on my second keyboard, I can see keys showing up on the screen in the window below. So that means that the unique ID number of my keyboard is this. You may need to go further if you have more devices or if your second keyboard has a different ID inside the windows. But since we found it, we don't need to go further. Let's go ahead and copy the number by pressing the copy button right next to it. Let's open notepad and paste this number so that it won't get lost. When we figured out what's the ID of our second keyboard, we can close the window. Now inside of the same folder, open the file subscribe all example.ahk. Press the right button and select edit script. Now you can see the default structure of the script that we're gonna be using. To create our own script, in our case, we don't want to use any mouse-like devices, so we may delete all mouse-related strings. Now, let's change the ID inside of the brackets in the getKeyboardID function. Let's go ahead and copy the ID we pasted previously into our notepad. Let's paste the ID inside of these brackets. And now we have our template ready, and we can save the file onto our desktop. Press save, go to your desktop, and rename it as second keyboard. What I recommend is opening your initial script.ahk and copying the header from there into our newly created template. I'm not sure if this is necessary, but for the sake of compatibility, I think it is worth doing it. Now, since our keyboard has its own unique number, every key on it has its own unique number too. So, to figure out what's the number of every key, we simply need to run the template script that we've just created, as it already contains a function specifically for defining a number of every key, which will be shown in a small box near your cursor. Let's go ahead and do that. Run the script by double-clicking on it. Now, let's go ahead and try to press any key on the keyboard. When I press an H key, it shows that the number of the key is 35. Now, what I advise you to do is to create a cheat sheet of all keys on your keyboard. It's gonna be a long process writing this all down, but I hope that the file that I'm gonna provide you with will help you with this task. 
As you can see, in my cheat sheet file, I've written down all the numbers of all the keys on my keyboard. One thing to note, if you want to fold something inside of the script editor, in the first string of the area that you want to fold, you need to type semicolon and then a left brace, and in the end of the area, you need to type semicolon and a right brace. Semicolon is used to create a comment string so that everything that goes after it will not be perceived by the compiler. To fold the area, simply press the minus button next to the first line. After you figured out what are the unique IDs of the keys that you need, we can open our second keyboard.hk file again. Next we can try to assign certain key combination to our keys using their unique IDs. In the description of the video, there's gonna be a link to all the files that are shown in this video, including my working current script. In this script, let's take a look at some simple example that we can break down. First, all the shortcuts should be inside of this main function called key event, and our function is located inside these main braces. In the beginning of the video, I showed you how you can enable the pencil tool by pressing an insert key on the second keyboard. Here's the script for it. So, you simply need to type if, then type state, which is actually state equals 1, to create the condition for the function that if the key is pressed and the sign and the ID of the key is 338, which we figured out through our previous script, then we're gonna run this piece of the script. So, just to remind you what actions you need to perform in order to enable the pencil tool, you need to press Alt, H, P, and 1. So, here it is. You just type send, Alt, H, P, and 1. That's all. That's all there is to it. Not much different from our first script, right? But note that here you don't have to type return because we're operating with a function and this function has no value to return nor does any cycle needs to be broken. It is due to how functions work in general, but it doesn't really matter now. Coming back to our script, there are definitely functions that are more complex than this. Sometimes you cannot just substitute several keys for one, sometimes you need to include some mouse moves and clicks. For example, as I've already shown, not only we can make our computer tap for us, but we can make it draw for us. Let's try to make something more practical though. Instead of enabling a pencil tool by entering a combination of keys, we can make our computer move the cursor to a pencil sign and press on it. Like here, I press the right alt key and it does exactly that. For this, we will need to use a window spy. As previously shown, window spy can be opened by right clicking on an HK icon in a taskbar and selecting window spy. For now, all we are interested in is the mouse position window. The numbers represent the current coordinates of your cursor. The screen coordinates are relative to the upper left corner of your screen. The window coordinates are relative to the same corner of a specific window, including the title bar, menu bar, status bar, and etc. Client excluding them. Using functions like mouse move or mouse click, you can move and click anywhere on the screen. So let's write a script. First off, we choose a key. Let it be right all this time. Then we set the default mouse speed to zero for it to move instantly. Then with mouse get position command, we save our current cursor position on the screen as an anchor point. We set the coordinate mode as client, so that when we're not in the full screen mode, we will still be able to use the script unless we make the window too small and the icons are minimized. Now, using Windows Pile, let's determine the position of the pencil tool relative to the client and save them in X1 and Y1 parameters. Then, we finally move our mouse to the position of the pencil sign using mouse move command, and then we click on it with a click command. Note that in mouse move, we need to enter values rather than variables, so to access the value of X1, for example, we put it inside person signs. Alternatively, you can use mouse click command, which is a combination of the two strings above. For this function, you need to enter the actual variables. For these syntax details, use a search tab in a help manual. After clicking on the sign, we return our cursor to its initial position with the mouse move command. And type return at the end. That's all. That easy, you can automate any mouse moves on your computer. Now, a couple of words needs to be said. For some reason, in Microsoft Paint, it shows that the starting point of the window is outside of it, so in cases like that, you just need to test this stuff and see which one Windows or Client coordinates work for your program. You also need to be careful with this method, because it is much less stable and universal and oftentimes limited. If the screen resolution changes, for example, you'll need to tweak your script for it to work. 
You also might not going to be able to access items in your program when it's not full screen. So just be aware that this is an alternative and sometimes an unavoidable one, but it's not without its flaws. It's always good to know both methods. Another extremely important thing to know, because sometimes a certain combination cannot be performed instantly, be it due to your computer being old and slow or because of the program being slow itself, likely sometimes you will need a small delay between some of the actions. The function for delay in AHK is sleep, and after a comma, you need to type a number of milliseconds that you want your script to wait for. My advice using a delay. If delay is not obvious, and if your script is supposed to work, but it doesn't, try using delay whenever possible. You might be surprised by where delay sometimes happens to be used. Now, since in the beginning of the video I showed you the example with DaVinci Resolve, I gotta mention one useful feature that you can integrate into AHK. The feature is called Tap Hold Manager, and it basically tells your computer if the key was either pressed or if it is being held. The thing is that in Windows if you press and hold a key, it sends it once, and after a short delay, it starts spamming this key repeatedly. So Windows automatically runs its own cycle, and with each iteration it sends the key that you press. So you don't have much control over the process. And essentially, there are two ways of looking at it. You may say that you're fine with it and simply replace a key for some other action that will be repeated automatically. Like for example, I can replace a left arrow key for a small mouse movement. And if I hold it, the key is getting spammed by default and we get this mouse movement. However, another way of looking at it is when you want to have more control. So with AHK it is possible to set up your own cycle where you'll be in charge of how fast iterations happen using sleep command for example. Will there be a delay in the beginning or not? And even here there are several ways of doing that. Some of them might be better in one case, some might be better in another. It's just too much to explain for a single video. I just want to show you that this is possible. But I'm going to show you one way of doing it. And the advantage of this method is that not only you get more control, it becomes possible to recognize how much times the key was pressed and run different scripts accordingly. This simplest example. In Notepad, if I type Ctrl once, it types hello. If I tap Ctrl two times, it types my name is Richard. And if I tap it three times, it types what is your name? Well, we're not gonna leave Richard without an answer, right? For that, I hold a control key and it types, my name is Sarah. And finally, if I tap it once and then hold it, we get a nice to meet you. And here we have a complete conversation with just a single button. Isn't that amazing? Let's take a look at the script. The main thing that we need to look at is this string. Here I tell the computer that everything related to a control key will be handled by this function number one. Inside of the function number one, as you can see, we have five different conditions. In the first one, we have a condition that we're not holding the key, is hold equals 1. Then that we tapped it once, taps equals 1. And that at the end we're gonna react to only when the key was pressed, state equals 1. And inside we have a simple send command, sending a text. For other four cases, you simply change is hold and taps parameters. And here we have it. Just don't forget to include tap hold manager in the include section and you're good to go. In the example with DaVinci Resolve, all that's different is that we additionally include interception tap hold library and change the new tap hold manager to the new interception tap hold HI keyboard ID. Essentially, this is all the difference. Of course, the script itself is different, but the base is almost identical. In this script, I use set timer and go sub comments for initializing the cycle or loop. Set timer sets the time between each iteration and go sub sends you to a label called move right. Once it's initialized, the script under the label gets repeatedly run. In our case, it is moving mouse cursor to the right. The script is initialized with the same if condition. That is, when you press the button, we want to break this loop when the key is released. Hence, we create this if condition where we turn off the timer. One small detail is that here inside of this add function, I included two additional parameters. 
I basically set the timer of registering a hold to zero, so that as soon as the key is pressed, it is considered a hold, not a tap. It is done to remove the initial small default delay before registering a hold. Accordingly, I set the if conditions. Download the script from the description and use it as a template. You can download the tap hold manager from the GitHub page, the link to which is as always in the description of the video. Copy the content of the library folder to your folder in the documents folder, the same as with AHI. Inside of the archive, you can also open the included examples and use them as a template as well. In this video, I'm not gonna go into all the details of script writing, so feel free to download the files from the link in the description. And as always, go and read the help manual for more functions and other useful information, like targeting a specific window, for example. Now, rounding this up, let me give you a couple of more tips. One good advice would be is to not always try and go for an obvious solution. For example, in Paint, there was a problem that when I choose a certain shape from the list, the position of selection is bound to a current shape, which means that you need to store the information about your current column and row in a global variable. In addition to that, the amount of times you need to press right and down vary depending on which row you currently are. Also, if you want to get from the first three rows to the fourth, you need to first go over columns, then rows, and the opposite if you're moving from the fourth row to the first three. And I did that with a lot of different conditions, and it worked, but there was a much easier solution. To reset the selection, you can simply enable another tool like Pencil, and then start from the first both row and column. These are the tricks you need to look for. If you want to be able to reload your script fast, at the end of the script you can bind a comment reload to any key like I did in this script for example. Use Ctrl plus Q to comment and uncomment selected lines. Again, use the following structure to fold big chunks of a script. Once again, I cannot possibly cover all the details and examples in a single video without making it ridiculously long. So I hope that what I showed you will get you started and make your learning process easier. Because when I started out, I wish there was a tutorial like that. But all in all, be creative with your scripts and keep learning. Thanks for watching.